by multiple cars, as I mentioned earlier on. So New off in a very precarious situation, but he often finds himself in these in these places. He doesn't qualify as well as he races. The up front, they are sp getting with Lee Aberdeen, Lee Aberdeen and Luca Verani, not very far apart at all here. But we just want to see how Halle Alistair Haig deals with Marcello Kessler coming around the old hairpin. Best decision they've ever made, just not having done that under the safety car, really. Yeah, they're taking their pit stop strategies from Ferrari lately or something that's going on. In turn one, just too much gas on them, too much feet on the out pedal, and Approaches dropped him all the way down the order. But Philip Hammer is eight out in front by an 8.91 seconds. Michael is a wall there, sir. Um, and it definitely doesn't want to be hitting that earlier on as well. Difficult, the understeer is in the dirty air through that final corner because it's such a long corner and you get dragged off into the grass very easily. He'll up the slipstream down it towards the chicane. Peterson was briefly alongside, but that slipstream has saved him and kept him in third. Yeah, Varani now lost a little bit of time to Aberdeen, about half a second. Peterson is. Push more and far and up ahead. He's got out of line. It's now Pike. Good have a go at Werrell. Don't push him off. He's in the championship fight. Jack Werrell chasing down Carl Jacklin. Further down, Rob Williams and Chris Barnes. Station run outside line now, though, for the heavy braking zone. Around the outside goes the Audi R8. Look Whoa. how much Miller's caught back into play. Exactly. Miller's just like Trump. He's got on second and change. All of a sudden, Miller's back in play. to the back end of Phil Jocelyn. So there's been a lot of movers and shakers in this first two laps here for race two. Yeah, absolutely serious racing league. Everybody's a lot of fun. Yeah. It's um, all about the entertainment, so I hope everybody is enjoying themselves out there in the chat. We know that Ron is at being enjoying himself oh watching the Burger King machines off into the grass a little bit there. Is that really bunching up now?
Does he have it? He's on the outside line though, going into the fastest corner on the circuit. Surely this can't work. Dominic Ligner has got a sensational run outside line now though for the heavy braking zone. Around the outside goes the Audi R8. Look Whoa. how much Miller's caught back into play. Exactly, Miller's just like trouble. He's like on second and change. All of a sudden Miller's back in play. Can Barry do it? Big Barry's gonna do it! Big Barry! Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the JBB GT4 Championship Round 1, live from the Nürburgring Grand Prix Strecker Circuit. I am Jace Parfait, going to be joined in the booth by Craig Jones, who's going to be with alongside me. This was run, obviously, last night, guys, but due to um, me having a flood in my house right at go-live time, unfortunately, we couldn't broadcast it live at that moment, but we are going to do it back here today for you. So we have got 25 cars on this circuit ready to battle it out here in the most fabulous circuit ever at the Nürburgring Grand Prix with the Vito Chicane. Going to be causing issues, I'm sure. But let's bring Craig into the booth with me now. Craig, welcome in. Hello, James. How are you? I'm fine, mate. How are you? I'm really, really good. I, I, I've managed just to not say it in that, that, that special <laughs> way that you'd like. Uh, I wasn't going to give you the satisfaction today. You almost did, though, didn't you? You almost come in and were like, uh, hello, I, jokes. I, I thought about it and then backed out last second, so hey. <laughs> oh, you big wuss. Right, guys, we are into qualifying. It is open qualifying. Heads of cars are on the circuit. If you're wondering, on the left-hand side, we've got Pro and Ams battling it out. You can see there the pros are in the green, the ams are in the orange. We've got a 15-minute sprint race to run through first, and then a 45-minute with a top 15 reverse grid. We have no idea who won these races last night. We unfortunately cannot do replays though, as it will not work correctly on a replay file. But overall, it should be a really good race. So last season, in the AMs, it was Tristan Engelstadt who took the victory over Robert Stotton and Rob Williams. Tristan's not here. Robert Stotton's not here, but Rob Williams is here. So Rob will be down in the AMs once more. In the pros, Stein Veeman, Kim Andre Bjortland and Mikey Pollard were your top three. And again, Stein and Mikey are not here this season, but Kim Andre Bjortland is. We've got a full contingency of Norwegian individuals, as you can see on the left-hand side there. Is Norway kind of the rest of the world this season? Certainly is, isn't it? Look at that. That's a, uh, I don't think I've ever seen that that in a, uh, a listing before. That's spectacular. Yeah, with all of these guys, of course, battling it out, I'm sure it's going to be absolutely amazing. Um, they are in various teams as well, of course. We've got uh, Sim Racing Norway, Poly, and I hate this, Kim Andre Bjorklund, you absolute rascal. They've given their teams some wonderful Norwegian names, and I can't necessarily pronounce them completely properly. Sim Norway... Sim Racing Norway, Poliochemi, which is going to consist of Gordon Hague and Kim Andre Bjorklund. Sim Nor Racing Norway, Big Og, Big Og Motorbloggen, which is Simon um, um, Modikliev and uh, Tobias Holman. Sim Racing Norway, Alken Storat Siljord, which is Vigard Olsen Lea and Per Havard Havstad. And then Sim Racing Norway, Helstad Services, which is just Torbjorn Mele here, the only one on his own. So there we go. Really looking forward to this one. Greg, what do you think is going to happen here with these GT4s? Well, it's GT4 racing, isn't it? So I, I guess anything can happen. But, you know, we've got 25 cars on the track. It's, uh, it is GT4s. It's a... a I would say a, quite a good track for these cars as well. So, you know, nothing really goes too wrong um, in terms of car choices uh, when you come to this track. Uh, and it being the GP, uh, 
P layout, I think it should offer some interesting battles throughout the field. Yeah, I think it will be as well. It's going to be an interesting, um, very interesting fight with some of these guys. I want to see how this all turns out and whether or not these guys will be able to battle away with each other. You know, the Norwegian contingency in with Jordan Malcolm, who's from Australia. We've got the returning Ewan Bremer here. Gordon Haig has been promoted to pros after the media day last week where they were assessed on point pace. Miles Owens in the pros as well. Torbjörn Mele is down in the AMs with Vigard Olsen, Leah, Rob Williams, Dan Lewis, Chris Evans, Stefan Mellis, Ovind Anderson and uh, um, Pierre Havard Havstad. And Stuart Pearson and Richard Jones are also down that way as well. Um, as we're coming into the last four minutes of qualifying, Kim Andre Biotla leading the way with Ewan Bremer and Jordan Malcolm. Malcolm in the McLaren, one of two McLarens. Very Porsche-dominated field, Mr. Jones. It is a very Porsche-dominated field, but I, personally, I, I haven't driven many of the Porsche, uh, what they have to offer on the iRacing service, but I do know that they are extremely popular. So I'm not really surprised to see that many on, on the track, really, because, uh, yeah, I, I do hear it's it's a really good, fun car to, to, to drive and um sort of manipulate to your to your driving style so yeah it's uh yeah good to see a, a range of cars out there but yeah definitely a, a porsche dominated field that's for sure yeah it definitely is again here um obviously we've got a new rule book in place an extensive rule book written by our very own steve burns who's made it compulsory across all of the jbb leagues it is a 16 page document of rules um apparently five lines wasn't enough and people felt that they were too open to interpretation however i figured my rule book was fine with five lines there as well i feel it was more than adequate enough to make up for it so um but there we go it is what it is and it's going to be a very interesting season i'm sure as the uh, the stewards are also in effect as well craig steward and kick it in this year Yes, uh, it, it does bring a whole new element to the racing. So, you know, if you've got a, a fairly, let's say, your version of a rule book, which is a bit vague and a bit kind of uh, be sensible, don't do not do anything stupid. Uh, that's the, that's sort of the clean version of your rule book, isn't it? Yes. Uh, so, yes, yeah, so introducing some rules, you know, that's that's really good to see. Doesn't always mean that the drivers are going to follow the rules. So, obviously, as we know, when the, the flag goes down and you're racing, emotions get in the way decision making can be quite poor a lot can happen on a track and and cause those uh, uh, let's say emotional reactions to, to to appear so hopefully we won't see any of that hopefully we'll, we won't need to use those stewards and if everyone just uh, stays calm follows the rules uh, we should see some epic racing yeah if they should stay calm of course now they will separate point system for the feature here and the heat, heat one it will be 25 for the win and then 22 19 17 and then it goes down in 1 16 15 14 13 12 all the way down to the bottom in the feature it's 50 then 44 then 40 then 37 36 35 34 and all the way down they are independent scoring systems so the pros will score the same as the arms so they will be on the st basically you get the same points if you win as an arm if you win as a pro you get the same points and that's one of the things that they will be having here this season as well um and so as you can see on the left hand side the pros are have got the green lines underneath them the arms have got the orange lines underneath them okay so please bear with us on that one as we go into the last minute of qualifying sven demo another new one onto the service i watched sven the other day actually come to think about it driving a mustang a uh, very quick driver and um it's going to be very interesting to everybody i think this season with the, the the fact that the the quality of the field has increased which generally brings greater racing doesn't it the, the more experienced drivers that we get yeah it certainly does it, you, when you have fields that have got mixed ability let's say you know it works in some ways. So you've got you generally got your faster guys at the front, you've got your slower guys behind, and the slower guys can use the faster guys to to, to sort of gain that experience, get that speed and, and get a little bit quicker and, and that, that that's pretty 
you know, it's good to see, let's, let's say it that way. You know, but when you've got a, a field of drivers where they're all the same kind of experience and all at the same speed, it really does, you can tell the difference and the quality mm. of the racing that you see is absolutely epic. So, uh, yeah, hopefully that's what we are about to witness yeah, firsthand. Hopefully we will. The grid is coming up now. So let's bring you up the grid for race number one. Sven Dammel will be on pole position with Kim Andre Bjortland in second. Jordan Malcolm in third with V1 Bremer fourth. Then uh, uh, Simon Modikliev in fifth. Tor, uh, Tor Anders Bevan in sixth with Gordon Haig in seventh. Anders Liliorde in eighth. Alexander Scarrett in ninth. Tobias Holman temp. Kettle Larson in 11th. And Magnus Dreid is the first of the AMs down in 12th. On from that is Miles Owens and then Richard Jones on 13th and 14th. Vigard Olsen Leo on 15th. Tobi uh, Tobio Mele on 16th. Rob Williams 17th. Pierre Havard Havstad on 18th. Alejandro Caridi on 19th. Hazel Samandari on 20th. Dan Lewis 21st. Stephen Mellis 22nd. Chris Evans 23rd. Stuart Pearson down in 24th. And then Ovin Anderson, the last car on the circuit, ready to go here for race one. If you had to pick somebody, Craig, without knowing the result, who's your winner? Um, I, I, I'll be honest, I'm too scared to actually uh, pronounce any of those names, if I'm honest with you. Uh, I, and, and to be honest, I haven't, I haven't really been following this, the, the series, have I? So I think it would be unfair for me to, uh, to, to pick a guess at this point. Well, it is race one, Craig. You know what I mean? It is round one. It so, is. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a, now's it, your chance, it, really, isn't it? I've got no idea on their ability, James. That's what that's just saying, ain't it? Literally, I'll be literally. Um, um, I don't want to go for someone obvious at the front. Okay, go on. Um, so I'm going to go with that. I that I can't even see on the on the timing. Because it's all going crazy. Because it's just about to start the race. Mm. Give me a second. Let that calm down, and I'll pick a name for you. Right. Uh, well, as we've hit the wonderful world to a storm where I am, as I've got lightning and thunder going off in my roof above me. So let's hope it lasts and does not cut me out once more. Uh, Sven Demo in the BMW for the huge ass team uh, here, and it is huge ass. I promise you that one. Not the other one, but this one. As Kim Ojo Bjorn leads us away coming round the Hyundai car of guys and the first opening race of the GT4 Championship live on the JPB Broadcasting Network. And we are going to be green, green, green. Sven's got away if it's Kim Ojo Bjorn over the line. Sven Double makes the jump. Jordan Malcolm in second with Kim Ojo Bjorn in first. Modi Kilev. In fourth, then the Ewan Bremer tour, and as Bevan four wide at one point going round into turn one, the tight hairpin. They've got to make sure they all get round. Alejandro Caridis for luck as Sim Racing is there as well. There's a spinner there, unfortunately, once more. And a couple of the guys have spun towards the back end. That's the 269 machine of Tobias Holman, who looks like he was also involved. This looks like a Sim Racing Norway. One, two, three, four. Gordon Haig's there as well. Oh, there's another Sim Racing Norway. That's Torbjorn Mele is unfortunately there. And Jesus Samandari is back into the pits. But at the moment, Soren Moldeklev and Bevan are sitting at the front of the field here. Yeah, not a great start for some, Craig, but great start for others. Oh, and it's still going on here as well. We've got another oh. set number thing to do off. That's, uh, yeah, not ideal. Yeah, that's one of the sim races in Norway, boys. That's Ewan Bremer, unfortunately, taken to the grass here on the opening lap. And Sven Dammel out in front, going up through the Schumacher S's. He's going to turn left, he's going to turn right, he's going to disappear. Liliorde is going to come through. Now also into the mix behind that is Kettle Laos and Magnus Droid, Richard Jones there. Uh, and currently for the SAS Racing Team, teamed up with Stuart Pearson for the SAS Racing Team. And they're down in 23rd place. But Jordan Malcolm, sandwiched between Kim Andre Bjortland and Sven Dammel as they're going to come round to complete a lap one. Yeah, fairly chaotic start to that race, wasn't it? So there's was at least three incidents that we were managed to, to, to catch uh, on that opening lap. 
and, and in typical places that you generally find around this racetrack as well so particularly turn one and you know those code tires starting to to, to to bite at the beginning of the first on the first lap and unfortunately uh having an impact on some of the drivers here but yeah it's uh settled down a little bit now um single file racing a little bit of side by side here and there uh, but yeah, let's bring it on for the next 12 or so minutes. Yeah, let's have a look and see how this all goes here as well as the thunder roars on behind my head. And this is going to be very, very interesting uh, once more as I have just lost all timing software ability. So that's not a good start. Is it really? At all? No, we don't. Wonderful. Never idea when technology doesn't work. No, and it isn't working currently either, which is great. Literally, right about now, I have lost all ability within the timing software. <sighs> Some things are just not destined, Mr. Jones, and I fear this may be one of them things. No, we'll, we'll blame it on the, uh, that roar that's coming from the sky right now above your house. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Give us two minutes, guys. We're going to jump onto the BRB screen. I'll be right back and I'll get this all sorted out. Thank you very much. Okay, guys, we are back live once more, and hopefully this is all working correctly now as we carry on 
with the great action that's coming on board with Mr. Robert Williams. Doing the business here at the moment. It's been a bit of a shaky start for some though, Craig, and it? it's been a little bit rocky for others. Yes, it's race one. That's what you're kind of going to expect, I guess. You know, pro, pro tires from the first couple of laps. It's race one, trying to set them there, see where everyone is, match what's going on on, on track. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's a bit expected. But overall, not too bad. Only a few casual crews from the experience that we saw in the opening couple of laps. Yeah, Sven Devil still leading the way here. We'll give that time and tower a minute to start kicking in and settling itself down. It is on a replay file. And as I say, I do have lightning above me as Magnus Droid goes round. Currently in 15th place. He's just dropped down to now. And Jordan Malcolm in the uh, the purple 1-9 McLaren. Only two in the field here with Jordan Malcolm and Ovid Anderson is at the other McLaren. Not a very popular car considering it's a very Porsche dominated field, Craig. Do you have you ever driven a GT4? Well, I think I have driven a GT4. I can't even remember which one it was. Uh, I think my result teammates were looking at entering uh, a car into a particular event a few years ago, but I couldn't I couldn't tell you which car it was. But to, to be honest, I was just looking at the cars. You know, they look fantastic. They sound fantastic. And in theory, they should race fantastic as well. So, you know, who knows? You might see me out on track on a, on a Wednesday night uh, sometime soon. I might, I might have a crack at it. Well, that would be Craig Jones in the AMS. Gordon Haig, water leak again. No, mate, I've just got thunder and lightning and it all went kaput for me. Um, as you can see here, Sven Devil out in front at the moment with 10 minutes to go of race one. He's coming in a BMW and enjoyed late on. And it looks like he's absolutely dominating over Kim Andre Bjork and Tor Hammers Bevan with Jordan Malcolm sitting in fourth place. Looking strong this year, this season. He messaged me saying, James, I can make it. And I said, OK, buddy. And he signed up, ready to go. Hopefully he'll be here every single season because he's a very strong GT4 driver to bring this to what can only be as a Norwegian versus rest of the world field. It certainly is. They're trying to conquer the conquer the world and, and conquer sim racing um, here. But it, it's great to see, and that's what that's what's so brilliant about you know, what you do in Leeds and you know, this, this style of racing. You know, you've got people from literally all over the world taking part. You know, I've got uh, friend, friends that I've met through through sim racing from all, all, all parts of the world. It's, it's fantastic. It really does bring the world together. So yeah, why not? Why not have a, a field that's that's dominated by one particular country? You know, if, as long as the racing's good and it's quality, clean racing, uh, who really cares? So, uh, yeah, really good to see. I fully agree with you now as we're coming into the video chicane. At the front here, with Sven Demel, he's gone through and out the other side. Kim Andre Bjork to tell him. Tor Anders Bervin and Jordan Malcolm battling in there. Anders Liliode, Alexander Scar, Miles Owens in that number 74 machine sitting there in seventh place currently some great action all the way through in the classes at the moment it is richard jones leading the arms there for the sas racing in 10th place in his bmw then tobias holman will be behind him he is in that porsche in the pros and then vigard olsen lea is the next one in line for the AMS at the moment. Gordon Hayes, Gordon was so nice to me over Christmas, Great. He's often to, for me when I go out there with my family in December. He's offered me a place to stay. I don't even have to buy a hotel. Nice. Is that, is that, is that including your whole family? I haven't told him about how many oh. I've got. I, I was going to that was my next point. <laughs> yeah, I haven't told him how many I've got though, Craig. That's the thing. You know what I mean? Right, I, okay. I, I can't tell him I've got seven of us, otherwise he won't let me. Yeah, yeah that's an awkward conversation, isn't it? Yeah, I'm sure there's got to be somewhere in Norway. If I'm looking to go to Norway and there's all these Norwegians, somebody's got to be able to put me up. So, answers on a postcard or in Discord, uh, as if you are in the JBB Discord as well. Don't forget, you can get yourselves involved in that one. Chris Evans and Havstad are having a right little ding-dong down here with Evans in the Triple B Black Machine and Sim Racing Norway El Elkin Starrett from Per Havard Havstad. Jesus Amandari is back on it as well. I think I did actually get a message that said, hey, James, it's actually Jesus. 
is not Jesus, so we'll keep an eye on that one. I'm sure he will message me after this. But Chris Evans taking that inside line, doing a stellar job at the moment. Up through the Schumacher S's, still managing to hold on once more. Still battling away quite nicely here as Evans goes around the outside. Some great driving from him. Rob Williams, his teammate up the road in that Porsche. He's trying to track down a Magnus Droid. He's driving around all on his own. But Jordan Malcolm is not letting Tor Anders Bevan get away here currently. He's managing to hold on to him, managing to sit in that fourth place. And it's Sven Demmel, Bjorklund, Bevan, Malcolm and Liliode as we go into the last six minutes. Uh, this uh, some fantastic racing here. These battles are, are definitely not not over. I was wondering if we we're going to see a, an opportunity there for a dive up the inside. Turn one does tend to tempt that. You've got to be a little bit careful on that inside line though, because it kind of dips out a little bit, and you can ram the car and uh, cause all sorts of mayhem behind. Uh, but it didn't happen on that occasion. So yeah, good, clean, sensible driving going on. Uh, and that's what we like to see in a, in a JPB league, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. You've got to try and remotely keep it clean as we're looking at Jordan Malcolm. Just about to try and go up the inside of Tora Anders Bevan. Not managing it this time. Through turn six and seven they go. Then they've got the run down into Goodyear Kerr at the bottom. And the 90 degree literal right hander. Jamie there says, I was surprised to see an event going on at this time of day. Yeah, that's because my water leak yesterday. Unfortunately, literally hit live, and then my son came in and was like, Dad, I've got water coming through my light bulb. And I was like, uh oh. Um, and then, well, the rest of history, there was just an unfortunate bit of leak going on. Kettle Larson with Miles Owens chasing down in the Porsche and the Mercedes. Kettle in the mark, uh, the Mercedes. And then we got Simon Moldy in what the Aston Martin gets it all a little bit squirrely as well. But he's doing a great job there in the car going forward. Five minutes remaining we've got 202 lap times probably gonna have about three laps mr jones yeah three laps sounds about sensible so you know drivers are going to stop getting into the zone of this of this race going you know i need to, to make these moves i need to decide what my plan of action is going to be to try and gain those extra two places and to be fair i mean i know it's only a short race there isn't a massive uh, there's quite a lot of battles it hasn't really spread out across the the, the the track as much as it can here so um yeah there's still lots of uh, fight left in this race i believe yeah i still believe there is and one of them is motor clear and holman and Richards Jones in that. That's Miles Owens and Kettle Larson. Larson's in the middle of the green. And then Moda Kliava in the Aston Martin on the left. Miles Owens is on the outside. They're going to be taking this free wide down into turn one. This is, is it going to work? It has done, I believe, Miles Owens went in a little bit hot. He's managed to hold on. He's going to have the inside of Moda Kliava this time around in the Porsche. And there. Simon on the outside, they're going to be a little bit of door banging. Carl Larson just sat there waiting patiently to see what happens as he's coming around the right hand. And now a right little ding dong going on here in this mid pack, Craig. This looks fun, doesn't it? It does. This is the sort of exciting race we, we want to see. I mean, three wide into turn one generally doesn't work out either. So, uh, yeah, fair play to, to, to the guys here. They've uh, done a cracking job there. There's some great action still taking place with three and a half minutes remaining. Everybody looks like it's been fairly clean. Don't forget, top 15 reverse for race number two. So at the moment, Sven Demmel out in front will be in the top. He will be in the reverse pole position is Sven. And you can see them there. He is leading the way. 21 on the clock. Sven's on his way through the Bilston curve, up through Advan Bogan. Oh, and he's got a literal three-second gap. You can see in the, the background, Tor Anders Bevan with Alexander Scarra and Anders Lili Jorde in the fight here. Then we've got the second battle of Miles Owens, Kettle Larson, the motor clear there again. Then we go down to the arms. Richard Jones in the BMW leading the way with Vigard Olsen Lear behind him, Magnus Troy behind that, and Rob Williams in the Triple P Racing White. There, represented by the fact he's got a white car, leading away from Hasdad for the Triple P Racing Black of Chris Evans. Alejandro Carini, another new one into the series with Stuart Pearson, again from SAS. Dan Lewis at the back from the Triple P Racing Black, and then Jesus Armandari from the Lurches Sim Racing bringing up the rear. But it is going to be Sven Demmel. There's going to be one more lap here before we go on to the last lap. Craig, you never told me who you thought was going to win. 
Well, I, do, I always generally go who was in, uh, starts in third. I believe that was Malcolm, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, but I don't, I don't I want to change. I, I don't know. I don't think it's going to happen, is it? Well, you're a bit, I normally you're say a bit late third place is a good bet. I am a bit late, yes. He can't yeah. go. That's like me saying Sven Demmel's going to yeah. win because he's 2.6 seconds out in front. If, if you had asked me a little bit earlier before the time and tower went a bit crazy, I would have given you a better answer than that. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, the timing tower did have a bit of a um, a bit of an issue, should we say? And unfortunately, it did cause us a little bit of problems at the beginning. But that is due to the fact, as we say, this race was run last night. We are watching it back here for the very first time. I do not know who won. I have no idea what the situation is. All I can tell you is Sven Demmel is going to go round. Yeah, and probably take the victory in race one. He's done an absolute stellar job in that BMW, has Sven. And it's looking like he's fairly dominant here, Craig, once more. Great, great fight from Sven. Great action all the way through. He looks really comfortable out there in first place, doesn't he? He's got a little bit of a gap behind him and a, you know, a little bit more gap after that. Really, it's only when you get to P5 we're starting to see that sort of close battling and a little bit of a train starting to form. But yeah, it uh, has, been, has been good racing. Like I said, normal opening lap dramas that we always tend to see in racing, particularly at this track. Uh, but yeah, this guy here that we are seeing has uh, driven a fantastic controlled race and is comfortably going to win this one. Yeah, I do believe you're probably right there. Sven Demmel is going to come over the line. He is going to be taking the victory. He managed to get one more lap in, though. Just when I thought he was all done, he's managed to get the final lap in here. So let's have a look and see what's going on with Alexander Skara and Anders Liliode. As Liliode is in the Team Viking 4 liveried machine Porsche. And then Skara in the IGL Coatings and Sandai Traffic School liveried machine there so a great little battle going on here we've also got miles owen still with moldy clear and kel larson and tobias holman vigard olsen lia is bringing it up in the arms at the moment it's like we've lost richard jones which could be a reason why and we have lost richard jones altogether and kel larson battling it out in ninth on that run through the left hand or turn six coming through to seven he hasn't got long to make this move here craig is he going to be able to get it over the next half a lap no i, I mean if he is going to make a move it, it's possibly quite difficult with training laps personally you know you might have a little bit into the going into the final couple of bends uh with the uh, Japan. Uh, but yeah he's running out of time if he's going to make a move he's got to make a move now yeah, and Miles Owens, Owens on a big old defense, these four pros together. Liliorde's in the front, Mascara and Bervin, and Jordan Malcolm all on his own. But at the moment, Miles Owens still managing to hold on. He hasn't got many corners to go before he goes through now, in through the rabbit hole, through the Bilston, up through the Advan Bogan. He's got one more chicane, the Vido chicane. No problems for Sven Demmel. He's gonna come through and take the victory in the opening round. The opening race of the round one, Sven Demmel gets that win with Kim Andre Bjorkland in second and Jordan Malcolm is going to come over the line in third. Bevan in fourth, Skara and then Lily Yorde. Did Miles Owens manage to hang on? He did, did so Miles, uh, Miles Kliav, hang on, he did. He's got the run down into the line. It is going to be Miles Owens. It is going to be Miles <laughs> Marty Kliev, Larson and Holman as they can battle it out further down. Magnus Droid comes over the line once more. And Rob Williams is going to be here in 13th place as he comes over the line. Not a bad start considering the opening round, right? You know, we've seen it before where sometimes it goes completely Pete Tong. But that wasn't too bad at all. No, they can be an absolute disaster at times, can't they? Especially when you've got new drivers being introduced to a series that haven't, haven't learned how other people race and, and sort of the strengths and weaknesses of the field. So, you know, I, I think that was a, that every driver can have their head raised high from that one. It was, uh, yeah, a fantastic race. No, it definitely was. And we are going into the 45-minute feature. They have got 50% fuel they will have to make a pit stop 
They are not going to get to the end of the 45 minutes. When will they make a pit stop? Should be round about the 30 to 35 minute mark. Give or take here. Some might be out. Well, I don't know if they're going to be able to go a little bit longer here, but round about that moment. And then you will have the pit stops in place. So let's bring you up the results for race number one. And you can see here it was Sven Dammel, your winner, Elmer Kem, Andre Bjortland in second, Jordan Malcolm in third, Tor Anders Berven in fourth, with, and Alexander Scarrett in fifth. And you've got Anders Liliorde, Miles Owens, Simon Modikliev, Carol Larson, and Tobias Holman there. In the AMs, it was Leah, your winner, with Droit in second place, and then Rob Williams. Getting a bounce storm in third. So well done to Rob in the arms. And then you've got Gordon Haig, Pierre Havard, Hafstad, Alejandro Caridi, and Chris Evans is your final 17. On from that, you've got Stuart Pearson, Dan Lewis, Ivan Anderson, Richard Jones, Stefan Mellis, Torbi Amele, Jesus Samandari, and Iwan Bremer. Two laps down the end there. So going forward now, it's going to be very interesting. We've got a brief five-minute warm-up here, Craig. Okay, so dare I ask you, who's going to win race two then, if you couldn't give me an answer after race one? Can I decide on the last lap again? <laughs> no, because that's just counterintuitive, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Who are you going to go for? You sound like my wife when I ordered dinner. She said, what are you having? And I, and I go, I'm not telling you. She goes, yeah, but I might order something and yours is better. I said, baby, pinch off my plate anyway. So what's the problem? Um, yeah, sound like my wife. Pick a car, Craig. Pick a car. Top 15 reverso, don't forget. Do you want the results again? Just so you can decide who was in 15th. Go on, go on, go on. All right. Go so 15th, you've got Hav, Havstad, Haig, Williams, Droid, Olsen, Leah, Holman, Larson, Modekliev, Owens, Liliode, Scarrett, Bervin, Malcolm, Bjorklund, Demel. You know what? I, I'm picking at random here, so I'm just going to go Owens. Um, Owens? Purely for the fact. Yeah, why not? Okay. I am, um, being that I haven't seen this, and you know I haven't seen it because we've been loading up this morning, I'm going to go with Gordon Haig. I think knowing what Gordon did last season, it's possible that he might get it done again here, whole Gordon. So I'm going to go with Gordon Haig this time around and see how he does don't forget guys you can check out the sponsors down below sim stickers there simstickers.co.uk uh being run by paul godden and they go check out blade designs as well with deck driver does does all the liveries for the esports team and also for other teams as well so you can go and check him out once again two minutes on the clock to go of the warm-up then we go into the 45 minute race and then it's just going to be go, go, go here, Craig. 45 minutes with a pit stop. Um, how do we think it's going to work out? Yeah, they're always interesting races, when, especially when you've got a pit stop in, involved. I mean, it completely different to, to race one. You know, race one being a sprint race, uh, flag goes down, just go for it and uh, try and make your way to the front, I guess, is really the only tactical nature about it. It's... Uh, that that's simply simply how it works but you know race two very different you know strategy does come into it when do you make a pit stop you know that might be dependent on what happens to you uh during the race and and how that race is going so yeah a lot more to uh, maybe it's had more of a cautious nature in a slightly longer race uh, you don't have the options to try and make the moves as quickly as possible you can kind of sit behind look at the guy in front maybe look at where the strengths and the weaknesses are and, and choose the, the right point to, to try and make a move. So, yeah, I think it's going to be interesting to see how this uh, second race uh, pans out. Yeah, I think so. Um, and I think the reverse grid at the top 15, that's always brings a little bit of spice into the scenario. I think that's the thing. A reverse grid always kind of mixes it up a bit and, and people end up getting all mixed up and then it all just can go very interesting how that one pans out i think because with reverse grids in general the faster the guys are at the back if you've never taken part in a reverse grid you obviously don't know but uh, obviously in a reverse grid the leader gets put back into 15th and then he's got to try and come through the field so 
Um, oh, as Vigardos and Leo and Modi Kliev, uh decided that they're going to hit each other in the warm-up. So, well done, boys. Um, so, yeah, so he goes to the back and then he's got to work his way to the front, which makes it very interesting of racing. Now, Craig, you've been involved in reverse grids before, haven't you? I have, yes, many a time. How did they work out for you? Uh, I, I love a reverse grid. Um, not so much when I end up on, on pole position, I must admit. Um, that's that's not the, the nicest part of it. But, you know, when when I've got slower drives in front of me, I do like I do, do enjoy the challenge of working my way through the field. It is, uh, it is good fun. All right, OK, well, we're just waiting for warm-up to come to the end. And then we will go in to the 45-minute race. Now, let's bring you up at the grid very, very shortly. If, I, if this is going to this gonna work correctly, it's not. It has decided it does not like it. So, I'm going to try and think here. What's going to be the best way to be able to do this? As we go down into 15 place the joys of coming off a uh, replay file unfortunately but Sven Demel will be down in 15th then you will have Kim Andre Bjorklund Jordan Malcolm Ewan Bramer will be along that Tor Anders Bevan Gordon Haig and who will be with Anders Liliorde Alexander Scarrett Tobias Holman Cal Larson in the mix Magnus Droid Miles Owens Richard Jones and Vigard Olsen Leah will be near the front. And then you've got Rob Williams, Pierre Havid Hastat, and Alexander Karidi further back. But it's going to be part of the Hafstad battle on the front row. We'll have to give it a minute to settle down here before we can get this all up and going for you. With Gordon Haig sitting alongside Hafstad, Droid, and Williams. Let's see. Now that is correct. Can I get the grid? I cannot. So that is wonderful. Will it do it this way? No, uh, unfortunately not on that one. But we've got 43 minutes on the clock. These guys are running round now. Last couple of corners, then the 45-minute the feature will be underway. And we will be green, green, green with Hafstad on pole, with Haig sitting in second place, Williams in third, Droid in fourth, as we're coming down into turn one. I've been told to watch out for something very interesting from Mr. Williams. So that's what we're going to look out for here as well um so let's get this race underway 43 minutes on the clock and it's going to be green 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 before we get going and it is how stats broken away with gordon haig in second place williams in third with magnus droid in fourth as these guys run down it is a pro am 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 fight there and Williams does settle into fourth place at the moment. Tobias Holman and Vigard Olsen there. Cattle last at the Modi Clear behind him. Oh, there's another off there. That's a BMW, I believe. That looks like Tor Anders Bevan. Williams is still running. Loses four places before we've even started. But at the moment, not a bad start. Kim Andre Bjortland's been off the side of the circuit as well. Unfortunately for Kim Andre there, Craig. But all in all, everybody else fairly clean. Yeah, much cleaner start than what we saw in race one. I think that one incident we did see. Uh, ooh. Magnus Troy oh, going come off. Come on, going off left, yeah. Uh, Magnus Troy in the Mercedes just completely going off there, unfortunately for him. Again, his first opening few laps are a little bit more excited than they need to be. They need to settle in. They've got 45 minutes. It's not a sprint race, Craig. It's 45 minutes. It's a long old time. Absolutely, um, and you know, you've got to be a little bit more cautious because it takes a more calculated risk when it's a much longer race that, that we're seeing on this one. But it's easier saying that than when you sat behind the wheel of the race car because you know, you've got a car in front of you, you see an opportunity, you, you just you just tend to go for it. So that was that very late on the brakes there. Um, it just about worked out for everyone. A few people losing a few places there from people checking up. Oh, and that's not what we want to see. No, that's Mr. Williams. That's two incidents in a row. I think the only terminology we could probably call him is Miley Cyrus, and he came in like a wrecking ball. Uh, unfortunately for Mr. Williams, that's two in a row now, so I'm sure the stewards might have us like to have a look at there with Miles Owens sitting in a fourth place behind him. 
Uh, Gordon Haig has kind of broken away at the front. He's in the Porsche this year, was in the McLaren last year. Stella driving the McLaren. Tobias Holman in the Porsche. Williams in the Porsche. And Miles Owens there. Then we break the Porsche matriarchy with Moldy Kliev in the Aston Martin. And Kettle Larson in the Mercedes. And Lily Orde back in the Porsche. And Hafstad in the Aston Martin as well. There's a BMW. That is Sven Demmel. He is literally coming in like a complete and utter banshee and doesn't make it through on Chris Evans for that triple bleed racing black team and poor old boy Sven Demmel has got the bit between his teeth here yeah, that was a, a very committed move into turn one I've got to say that was uh, coming for a long way back but that is where you can have those opportunities to, to, to make a move uh, so yeah he took it and uh, yeah fair play to him yeah, he definitely does. Williams is being a bit of a cork in a bottle. Miles Owens running wheel to wheel with Modi Kliev. And uh, these guys go into front there. Is Williams going to go and make another one? Or is he going to get run around the outside? He's getting a bit swamped here. He's not really sure where to go. He pulls over. Fight, my man. Fight. Are you not entertained? No, I'm not. You've pulled over and got your belly tickled. And you've just allowed all them pros to go through there, Greg. I know it's pro and ams, but, you know, Put up a little bit of a scrap, eh? Yeah, but you, I suppose you could be thinking at this stage of the way, you know, you've got 40 minutes to go, you know, could you get behind a faster guy and, uh, you, you know, uh, gain some experience, gain a little bit of speed from um, the, the car in front from the draft. You know, it could be a good tactical move. You never know. Well, is it YouTube chat? He said he didn't make contact with either of them cars. Mm, you're lucky we don't have replay functions here, dear sir. Otherwise, we might have had a little bit of a look back just to see that. But I did like the Miley Cyrus reference. She came in like a wrecking ball. So a good job from you. Miles Owens hanging on once more for Moldy Clear and Kel Larson with Anders Liliorde from the tour, Team Vikings 4 team. Alexander Scatter from the IGL Coatings and then Williams in that Triple P race in white. He's got Demel trying to go one way. He's got Jordan Malcolm trying to go the other. Where would you go if you're stuck between this rock and a hard place about now? Um, uh, to the pub. Maybe, I don't know. Um, to the pub? Yeah, I just wouldn't bother. Oh, all right, Mr. Yeah. James. Oh, big yeah. dive. Big dive there for Body Clear. He's got it through over Cal Larson with Lily Orday and Alexander Scarrett here with Jordan Malcolm sitting down in eighth. Craig's off down the pub already. Um, that just goes to show that Craig's driving ability is somewhat less than ours. It's got nothing to do with my driving ability. It's got more to do with my laziness, I suppose. Laziness? Yeah. A bit rude, Mr. Jones, a bit rude. You know what I mean? Thought you would have put up a bit of a fight as Miles Owens is doing with Kettle Larson. Larson's in the inside. They're going to be knocking doors on the run round to the Goodyear kit. And now you can see Larson on the... Um, we've got Larson on the left. Miles Owens on the right. Larson's in the Merc. One of only three Mercedes. Magna Droid's got the other one. And Torbjorn Mele has got the one after that. Alexander Caridi looks like he's had a bit of a horrid time. Jesus Amadari did not take to the start. Vigard Olsen Lea looks like he's out. Ovin Anderson and Pierre Havard Afstad are unfortunately out here. So both men look like they've had a bit of a drama going on but at the moment it is Gordon Haig out in front with Tobias Holman second, Moldy Kliev in third, then Larson, then Lily Orde and then this pack of cars with Miles Owen Scarrett, Malcolm and Demel all trying to fight their way through and the leader of the arms at the moment is Rob Williams sitting down in currently as 10th overall so great job I suppose in the A in a way leading the arms but it would have been nice for it, you know, a bit more sternly muscle yeah, I, I, I suppose you just got to make a, a, a tactical choice with what, what's in front of you, don't you, and the information that you've got. So, uh, you know, and that, that's working out, then that's absolutely fantastic. I mean, just sit, sitting here listening and watching this, this race unfold, I mean, it's definitely got a, a different feel from it from race one, uh, and not what I was expecting. It seems a little bit more chaotic, drivers really trying to, trying to go for it, trying to make those moves nice and early. I was expecting it to be a little bit more relaxed and a little bit more uh, careful, let's say, but it, it really hasn't been like that at all. Uh, Chris Evans here alongside the BMW of Richard Jones. Evans in the Porsche. Is he going to sweep round the outside all the way through the AMG arena? It's not the fastest way. Jones is on the fastest route. 
in that BMW does make it through, but then again, he misses up the exit coming out of the AMG. Through turn three, through turn four, he manages to hold on. Evans was giving him a little bit of grief there. Alejandro Caridi, Magnus Droy, and Tor, Andrew, uh, Tor Anders Bevan. Droy, of course, down eight places as we saw him go off the fly and off the side of the circuit. The same with Bevan who was also off the side of the circuit. And then behind that is Vigard olsen Lear. No Dan Lewis, unfortunately, on this one. Looks like we've lost Lewis and Jesus Amandari. We've also lost. But Liliore, Scarrett, Malcolm, Demel. This is where it looks like the action pack side is going to come from here, Greg, within these guys are the faster guys coming through. Yeah, it's definitely where all the action uh, seems to be. And we've seen lots of side by side, which is really, really good to see. I mean, the, the exciting part of racing is when we're seeing side by side. And when you're seeing it corner after corner, uh, that really does highlight some, you know, these guys are, are doing some real respectful, uh, good racing. So, uh, yeah, it's really good to see. Uh, 37 minutes. Uh, hopefully we'll see a lot more of it. Yeah, we will. Don't forget, we've got pit stops to come as well. 50% fuel there. They do have to stop. Carol Larson must say, what an awesome broadcast. Did you expect anything different, dear sir? Come on. You've known me long enough, young sir. We deliver excellent every single time as Malcolm and Demel get a little bit close for comfort going around that high Hyundai curve, the final corner here, before they go on the run down now the start, finish straight. And, well, at the moment... Gordon Haig out in front by five seconds. I'd like to say I did pick Gordon. Thank you very much. Oh, I knew you were going to. I was just waiting. As soon as you said it, I was like, any second now he's going to mention that that's what, that was his choice. And there you go. You had to go and say it, didn't you? Yes, well done, James. How many trophies you got, Craig? Still, still a long way to go. How many trophies you got, Craig? Uh, I've, got, I've got four proper ones and two joke ones. So six in total. Six in total. So there we go. Yeah, but two of them, two of them are joke, joke ones. So yeah, they don't really count, do they? No, definitely not. But there we go. We knew that was coming as um, there from Mr. Jones. Let's get that out of the way because he normally has a great job rubbing that in my boat race. Torby Mele, Stuart Pearson, and Stefan. Is that no? The Stuart Pearson and yeah, Stefan Mele are almost free wide on the run down from four five into turn six through seven. They've go. They managed to hold on to it there. But boy, oh boy, that was very, very close indeed as well. But it's mid-pack. Devil just can't seem to be making inroads on Malcolm at the moment. And Mal it's, it's kind of almost, it, it, it reminds me of a little bit of a pressure cooker with these guys. It, it's like something needs to happen as Alexander Scarrett's just got a slow down there. So unfortunately, that did not work out for him. It's almost like something's going to happen, but we don't quite know when and we don't know quite know where. Yeah, Do let's just hope me? it doesn't it? Yeah, it, and it's really frustrating, especially if, you, if you've got that pace on the car in front of you, to try and find a way past them when they're defending so well and they're trying to make that car as wide as possible. It really does become quite frustrating, and that's when little mistakes start creeping in. Mm. You know, you just you kind of lose your attention and your focus on that car and it just all becomes about getting past the car and you forget what's going on behind you and it can just open up a whole can of worms. So, yeah, you've got to keep your cool, you've got to keep your focus and, and just be patient with it. And, you know, once you've got that absolute move on, go for it, which it looks like he's going to try oh. now deep onto the brakes. Uh, yeah, perfect execution into turn one. That's how it's done. Demo comes in so quick on that BMW. He is like an absolute banshee, isn't he? And just absolutely flies in and just does an incredible job of getting that car stopped. Jordan Malcolm with a little bit of a blink there, unfortunately. I'm sure he'll come back. He has on the Australian internet. He's got to run out and feed his kangaroo out the back before he can get it running faster. It's Toby Omele and Stuart Pearson for the SAS racing team going into the last 33 minutes here. Everybody else a little bit spread out from Alexander Scarrow, who's trying to get onto the back of the Miles Owens with Ewan Bramer. And then we got Rob Williams driving around a little bit on his own with Richard Jones catching up, Kim Andre Bjortland trying to come back through the field. Chris Evans from the Triple P Black and then the Toby O'Mell and Stuart Pearson battle. But it's starting to get a little bit more settled, Greg. You know, that pressure cooker that we thought we were going to see is starting to calm down just a little bit. And as I say that, Tobias Holman and Moldy Clay have a right in front of each other. 
Yeah, I think you're going to have that kind of um, spring effect throughout the whole of the whole of this race. To be honest with you, uh, especially when pit stops and stuff come going to come in, you know that might bring the field a little bit closer. It might make them more spread out apart. But you know, it's uh, it's good racing. It's good, clean, fun racing. That's what we like to see. Uh, and there's still plenty of action going out on track. Uh, so yeah, it's uh, 32 minutes left to go on, on the the clock. Um, there's still plenty more action to be coming our way. Yeah, I'm sure there is at the moment. I'm already clear if you can see that. With Tobias Holman in front, Carol Larson trying to pull this group up. He's like a one-man machine trying to get this group pulled in to the guys in front. Holman there just hanging on. Motor Clear trying to go around the outside. They're both on the same team, mind you. The Sim Race Norway Billog, Billog Motor Blogger team say that one when you're drunk mr jones <laughs> you're doing well you're doing well I, I'm, I'm very impressed whether, whether it's right i don't know but <laughs> i have no idea to be honest like, probably not you know what i mean i'll probably oh, oh i'm sure simon will probably message me after and be like james it's, it's not moldy clear it, it's something else yes these guys uh rule number one i guess um they're really trying to push it at the moment, aren't they? Yeah, they want to try and go forward. The problem is, is they're losing time to the people behind. And oh, no. Oh, well, that was, of course, unfortunately, Simon is off the side of the circuit. Oh, oh my dearie me, is not looking good in that Aston Martin. No. That is some serious crab in there. Sees all out of shape. Keep it to the inside. You're going to have to allow them to go around the outside or keep it somewhere. You can't be, surely you can't be still running that car at full pace. It even looks like the front end is just completely reared in. There it is. And that Aston Martin is still up and running mm. here, Craig, to be honest. But it makes you wonder how this Tobias Holman is now in with Kettle Larson. Yeah, really unfortunate incident on that one. It just uh, it looked like he lost the back end and was just nudged around a little bit maybe by his teammate. Uh, and that's what happened. The pack behind was closed in there. We're loving it. It was given the opportunity to uh, get back into into the race. But yeah, unfortunate to see that one because that could have uh, ended up quite uh, spicy. But talking of spicy, this is starting to get uh, quite spicy here. So see a, a car quickly uh, going into the pits there. Um, but yeah, this uh, this train is definitely starting to, to heat up a little bit. Uh, it definitely is. It definitely is. You see Holman's on the inside. Larson's on the out. Lily Orde's trying to get his nose in there. Jordan Malcolm's trying to have a go as well. Sven Demmel is the first one. It looks like he, ooh, he might actually be out as Sven as he's entered into the pit lane. And we haven't seen him come back out the other side just as of yet. Um, but Modiklev is trying to come back through the field with a very battered car. Is he still overtaking the cars in front? Must be the cars. Must just be cosmetic damage. It looks a lot worse than it actually is to drive. Yeah, I don't. No, uh, maybe not. I wouldn't want to be involved with that. Um, quite, quite often, it's that you find the car will turn perfectly fine in one direction, but it won't turn turn in the the other direction. So maybe that's a, a little bit of a, a problem that he's having. So do you reckon it's the fact that it's gonna, it will only go one way properly and then it won't go the other way? Perhaps, yeah. It does look like that front left wheel is facing outwards a bit, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, but it's hard to tell whether it's just where the bumper's crushed in. But it was quite an impact. So, you know, there's, there's bound to be some sort of steering or suspension damage to that car. I'd be very surprised if there isn't. Yeah, I think you could be right here, mate. I've got to be honest, I think that um, there could be some issue within that car. I'm not entirely sure whether or not he would have been able to survive that one without any damage, of course. But let's get back into these actions as these guys continue to fight it out now. Sim, even Bremer is there. He's trying to track down Kim Andre Bjorkman. Alexander Scarrett is going to come around the corner with like a banshee cars behind him. Rob Williams is in there. Richard Jones, Molde Klev is on his way back through. Lily Orde as well. There's nowhere for Jones to go. He can't break it. They're side by side on that run up into the veto. It is a left. It is a right. Williams hard on the brakes. Comes across the nose of Alexander Scarrett. Cuts his nose off. Two people into the pits. The pit stops are happening now. 
Uh, we did say they've lasted about 17 to 18 minutes there, Craig. A little bit earlier than I thought they were going to be. Yeah, and, uh, you know, I suppose it can change and, and you know, people's like, thoughts on, on what, when they're going to do it might have changed. But, yeah, it's some really, really fascinating racing. I was just looking as, as they're going up into that chicane there. I mean, that part of the track really does tend to bring cars together uh, and you can really get a run and then you're just suddenly on the brakes into that chicane and it's where do you go? What do you do? Do you go for the move? Do you not go for the move? Very difficult to make a, a move into that final chicane. Yeah, Ewan Bremer, Magnus Droid scrapping it out side by side going through the AMG arena. If you come over any more, young sir, you probably might get linked to Ewan Bremer and that's going to shoot you across his nose. You might want to give him a little bit more room. As you can see, Stefan Mellis behind, just sitting there waiting patiently, not entirely sure what to do, to be fair, for poor old Stefan. I wouldn't really want to know what to do either. I kind of would just follow and then wait after until see what happens after. Do you know what I mean? I think that's going to be the best yeah, select, that's solution. Sound advice. Yeah, I agree. You agree? I, I, yeah, for once, I do agree with you, James. How do Lentworth's taste, Mr. Jones? Um, I'm kind of wishing they weren't forever being on the internet. <laughs> oh, yes. Um, I, yeah, yeah. We'll have to find a way of deleting this uh, this video afterwards, I guess. Well, unfortunately. But, but don't go making it a short or anything, though. Oh, I am. I'm going to go and record it now <laughs> and, and play it back to myself and, and say I fancied that one. You know what I mean? So there we go. Mm. Craig Jones actually agrees with me. As Alexander Scarra and Anders Lidiorde still fighting out with 26 minutes on the clock. Elon Bremer, Magnus Droid, Stefan Mellis, Alexander Caridi and Vigold Olsen Lear are in this next pack. Gordon Haig still not pitted and he's got an opening gap of 10 seconds, Mr. Jones. 10 seconds here for Gordon Haig. Surely he's just got a pot of run now. He's got, uh, he's got a, 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 an easy... Uh, well, it's afternoon now, but an easy evening now, hasn't he, let's say. Uh, just, yeah, keep it nice and straight, focus, make sure you're not doing anything daft to, to try and push it or, or extend it anymore. But, I mean, with the battles behind, you might find that gap's going to extend naturally anyway. Mm. So, uh, yeah, in a really strong position for the end of this race. Yeah, you can see Tobias Holman there, not really getting onto the front end of Kettle Larson. It's not really making any inroad. So these guys continue. Then Jordan Malcolm with Miles Owens. They're continually to fight it out in the mid pack. So this could be an interesting situation. And I think one that could just keep going all the way through Liliore and Scarrett as they're continuing to fight out. This is the Team Vikings 4 team, Liliore. And then we've got the IGL coatings of Alexander Scarrett behind them. So two cars that really have got a little bit more time a little bit more battles on their hands you want bramer looks like he's the first one to appear in the top 10 craig so it could be an interesting one here yeah i guess we're going to find out how that plans out and uh if if if, if that works for them but yeah there's there's still plenty of quick post battles going on uh, that front lead seems to be extending itself a little bit more which we we're just talking about um and you know the more these battles are going to going to carry on the more we're going to get more cars joining them so uh yeah it's good to see that at this point of the race uh about halfway through that we uh we're still seeing these battles and it's uh, game on yeah sven demo's another man in the pits he's battling away with jesus samandari in the bmws as they're coming through the Ravenel in the, into bilston the right hander before they start their run up through advan bogan and then down into the Vido chicane here that what has been a very interesting evening of racing, I must say, with these guys. I was always wondering how it was going to be, and we always have a little bit of a sweat on for the first round, don't we? Just generally because of the fact that you're never quite sure when you're putting 25 cars, some have never driven together, how it's quite going to turn out. Yeah, it's always, always a major risk, but you know, I think a lot of the drivers have come into this race with a mature kind of mindset on them that it is the first race and it's you know let's see what everyone's like let's see what the capabilities are like uh maybe not race too hard uh just whilst we're trying to sound out the rest of the field uh and then you know uh, 
for the rest of the season it, it's, it's kind of game on I guess so mm. yeah it's been a, a good opening round it's good to see uh, it's really encouraging to see for the rest of the season yeah I do fully agree and I, and I think it's going to be very very interesting don't forget if you want to get yourselves involved you can join the JPB Discord and come and drive along and um, have a good old time with us on the GT4s we've got Clio's we've got NASCAR's we've got Endurance's coming up we've got a little bit of everything happening here as well and it's going to be a very busy time across the JBB YouTube channel. Don't forget, later on today uh, here, we are opening up with the Radical Race Series there from Road Atlanta. And then we've got the Triple Bypass Xfinity Round 12 from Wilkesboro. That should be an interesting one. On the upside of that, we come on to Saturday and you've got the Tiger Floria WVC 1964 Series 37 to 43 minute laps. And they're doing three of them at the old it's historic Italian Targo Floria course. I don't know if I would fancy that one. No, that sounds interesting. Mm. In the old Shelby Daytonas and the Ferraris and the Alfa Romeo yeah. Juniors. It's, um, yeah, it's a very interesting series, that, and one that's becoming a firm favourite here on the JBB YouTube channel. Scarrett and Liliode continue to fight into the final 21 minutes. Nearly we go. These guys still continue to battling it out here, Craig. Some great action taken on track. Not everybody's pitted, though. I think the pit stops are going to be important. Oh, I think they're going to be absolutely crucial, particularly with uh, some early moves with pit stops uh, in this race. So, yeah, was it a good uh, was it a good idea to go early? Was it a, a bad idea to go early? Uh, and that's that's the, that's the point about this this little race. And it, it's you know it's not necessarily what's just happening in front of you on the track. It's what everyone else is doing um, in terms of strategy and, uh, and tactics. And that that's what makes uh, a slightly longer race um, more in a way kind of more entertaining because you know quite often in a in a race you know I, I particularly hate sprint races where I've had a bad start to a race I've ended up in a barrier no comment James um, and you know I've rejoined the field and you know there's not a, a single car to be seen for you know they're seconds down the road I'm not kind of in a fight and I, I just tend to give up and, and, and lose interest but you know in a slightly longer race where there's a, a lot more that can happen you know that doesn't necessarily mean that's the case and you can kind of maybe get back into the fight a bit longer longer down the field so uh yeah it's uh not particularly racing that i i'm well exposed to but uh, i think I, I should start maybe uh, introducing it a little bit more into my uh, my racing career i guess yeah what do we think obviously with your you know racing standards mr jones you know i think you, t you touched on something there as well right? where you were like no comment now obviously the only comment i got from obviously myself is obviously i've seen you drive at silverstone a couple of times and it's not always gone well for you um why don't you just say it james yeah so i've i've got i've at silverstone in particular seems to be a bit of a challenging track for myself i've uh, i've driven it a, a few times and on two occasions now i've sadly got lost um, and I think that's just down to the poor track design more than anything. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's, that's what you're trying to get me to say. So there you go. I have said it, James. Did you, are you saying, you, sorry, I didn't hear you. You got lost at Silverstone. I got lost at Silverstone twice, yes. Okay. Well done, Mr. Jones. I'm proud of you. But it, it happens to the best of us. I, I wouldn't know. I don't seem to have that problem. I can, I can generally find my way around a circuit as can have a stud in and that Aston Martin and Ovin Anderson in the McLaren as these guys continue to fight it out further down here. A great little bit of action. These both of these guys have pitted, I believe. And we've got 19 minutes on the clock. And by what I can see, everyone down to Mr. Williams has not pitted. So I think Rob could be the last one who has got a pit here as we're coming into the 18 and a half minutes to go of the GT4s live from, <laughs> from Germany, ready to go at the Nürburgring Grand Prix Strecker circuit here once more. And it's myself, James Parfit and Craig Jones in the booth with us. And uh, Craig, have you enjoyed yourself? Yeah, do you know what? I, I, like I said, I'm not, not well exposed to GT4 racing, um, but I, I've 
pleasantly surprised. I mean, I have to, I have done a little bit with you uh, in the last season. Well, I've done the old race, I think, with you in the GT4s uh, commentary-wise, but you know, never driven it. But this has actually been really good to to, to, to watch, and uh, I've never been a fan of the longer races. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm definitely sat here wondering. I might I might give this a go. I might uh, might actually get in one of the cars, uh, take the car out, and see how it feels. Are you gonna Are you gonna compare your pace to some of these though? Because you know, we've got, we, you've got to realistically no. be like. No, I, and I don't think, for me personally, uh, I can really say anything about pace or anything at the moment. Um, you know, you know, for myself, I'm, I'm struggling to get a, any car around the race track at the moment. Um, and I, I, and it's not an excuse. And I know you're going to say it's an excuse, but obviously, I am, I am recovering from a, a, a serious uh, illness. So. That's definitely having a part of my coordination and stuff like that. So for, for me, I just like taking a car out and uh, yeah, just having a bit of fun with it. There's, there's no kind of real, uh, I don't know, desire to go out and do championships and win championships and, and, and stuff like that. It's just a matter of uh, getting in a car and uh, yeah, enjoying what I do. Well, there you go. That's from Mr. Jones. To the last 17 minutes of race two, Oliver Alexander Scarrett and Bjorklund still fighting it here, and that's actually Lily Jorde, not Bjorklund, as they're slowly becoming more and more spread apart, waiting for the top guys to go into the pit lane. Looks like Sven Devil has Williams is still not, but he's been overtaken by Ewan Bremer coming into the final 15 minutes. How do you handle a pit stop, Greg? Do you, do you run it till you're completely empty? Um, well, that's never advisable. So that would be no, you, you know, know what I mean. Like, like an experience, but I know not <laughs> running it to its empty doesn't normally end well, James. No, but you know what? I'm, I get you're getting that. You know what I mean? Not until it's like dry, bare bones empty, but until your spot says you need to come in this lap. Do you do you run it? Until then, or do you, do you sit back and think, okay, I'm going to try and do some tactics here, or something? Yeah, and I guess if you're going to do, if you're going to go down the tactical solution, you need to have a certain amount of fuel left to be able to be able to make those decisions, whether it's going to be earlier or, or slightly later. So I guess you know, if you've got a target number of you need to pit by, and then maybe you've got a window of two or three laps where you can make that decision. Uh, then that's probably be a, be a more sensible strategy. But as I've been saying throughout this race, you, you just don't know, as the dog starts to bark, uh, you just don't know what's going to happen, do you? So uh, it's, it all does come down to tactics in the end. Yeah, it definitely does. That's the thing, when you're tactical, you're trying to go for a pit stop as well. It's always going to be more and more difficult because you've got to work out where you're going to come out, how you're going to come. Is everything going to be OK? What the situation is when you get out? Who's going to be in and around you? Where's the traffic? Can you get clean air as well? It's all of these things have got to be considered. And Scarrett and, and currently with Liliode, these guys continually and continue and continue to fight. And I'm probably guessing these might fight him right up until the pit stops. Well, they are racing drivers after all, so I wouldn't expect any less from any of them not to be fighting uh, up until the absolute last minute. But yes, I think yeah, it's going to come up to the pit stop, see what happens in the pit stop, and then, uh, yeah, it will uh, determine what's going to happen next, I guess. Yeah, I, 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 I think the thing is with this series, this season, it's going to be very, very, very interesting to see what goes on in general and I, I, I wonder how team orientated some of these are going to be and whether or not it's going to be just all for themselves or whether or not they're going to have that team environment about them and that's the thing i think we'll be saying it would be worth looking out for how much of all of these sim racing norway teams are they going to join together how much are the you know how how do you work a team factor in when there is like three or four of the same sister team? Yeah, I guess it's difficult. I mean, I, I have, I've, I've had this, this is it a problem. I don't want to say it's a problem, but you know, uh, for anyone that knows me, I, I race with the result clothing team and, and there's lots of sister teams in the result team. Um, 
and, and generally, you know, we, we race that, you know, we are part of a team, but, you know, when it's one car in front of the other, it's it's race on. There's no kind of like, you know, uh, taking it easy. As you've probably seen many times, you know, uh, we, we, we often get it wrong when teammates take e- 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 each other out. So I, I suppose it d- depends on the mentality of the team and what the team vision is and what the team are trying to achieve I- I- in the racing. So, you know, sister teams can uh, sometimes uh, be an advantage. Um, it goes down to what 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 the values of the team are, to be honest with you. But you know, with it, uh, quite a, a dominant force of a, a particular team in this one, um, I dare say there's going to be an advantage at some point in it when it comes down to it. Yeah, I think if it's pushing for the championship, isn't it? And they've got one driver out in front who needs to win the race to win the championship, and they're sitting in fourth behind some of their others. They're of course going to play that team game and allow a bit of four to allow them to go through but it's only when you sort of get really into the nitty gritty where sometimes you've got the guys from IGL you've got the guys from Sim Racing Sports the other race from Triple P and they're all battling in and around would you, as Gordon Haight goes into the bits would you allow the guy to go through if you're losing time though or would you just keep going and going and going Tobias Holman is a, another one that's got into the pits. I expect Anders Liliore to also be making a dive in if he is. Oh, he thought about it there. It looked like he may have also just missed the pit entrance there because he thought about it and then ducked out of it again. Yeah, it's a bit bizarre on that one. Um, yeah, it's, I mean, going back to the team things, I mean, I've been in that position where I've been fighting for a championship and you're going up against another guy and they're blatantly getting help from their teammates so you know i've literally saw it in a race where every single team member pulled over to the side of the track to let this guy that i was battling in the championship through just to gain those extra points and i guess the question comes down to it is you know how do you want to win it you know do you really want to win a championship based on your teammates pulling over to the side of the track to let you through to gain an extra few points but it's for me that I'm not I'm not interested in that. I'd rather just win it off merit and purely just off that. But doesn't he then doesn't that also happen in real life? It does happen in real life, but it doesn't mean that it, it should happen in real life. For, for, like I said, for me, I, you know, I, I I know it happens in motorsport. We've seen it time and time again. Uh, it, it, for me, there's just not a place in motorsport for it. it. It shouldn't be happening. Every track should be every car that's on that track should be racing each other regardless of if they're teammates or not. Yeah, I do. I, I fully agree. And I think that's one of the things that's been brought in multiple times about how team players battle it out here. It's Tor Anders Bervin and Magnus Droid with Vigard Olsen Leah with Kim Andre Bjorkland in front. William still at the moment looks like he's leading the arms. It's also looking like he hasn't pitted yet. He has got to be borderline empty if he ain't chugging already here. And as he has gone in, it's just not picked it up. But I can't actually see who he has. He has got Sven Devil and Jordan Malcolm chasing him down. Nine and a half minutes to go. If he was managing to get anywhere near this end fight here, Craig, he's done a great job. Yeah, I mean, if that is the case, then yeah, um, absolutely. Big respect for, for, for making that, that work. Um, let's just hope if he hasn't cleared that he hasn't left it too late and we get the scenario that you talked about before where um, you just run out and the car says enough I'm not going any further in this race oh no we've just got to put yeah there he goes like we knew it was going to happen yeah Williams does go and pit that so makes it in to the pit lane does Robert Williams and comes out I don't think he's going to come out in front of Memphis Troy he has got 40 seconds to this man so Magnus is coming off the run up through the Bilston curve in through the Agban Bogan here before he goes down into the Vido Williams has stopped in his pit block which is not he's still on the way in is poor old Mr Williams is it stopped now it's just about stopped where is Magnus Droid he's coming around the final corner can Will it surely he's got to be on his way out. There you go. He's on his way out now. Magnus is coming down the start, finish straight. I think Williams should be able to get hold of this. I think he's still going to hold on to the lead. 
as they're coming through. And it is Williams does manage to hold on to the lead of the arms. He left it, I think he left it as late as he could and then did a stellar move getting out in front. Yeah, absolutely. And that, that's just come down to the to, to the way that he's handled the race, I suppose. You know, like I said, he's, he had that opportunity in the race. If he, if he just allowed a little bit more time and just didn't pit so early to gain that, that distance on, on, on the guy behind, um, then, then why not? Uh, and that's what he's done. And it's worked out perfectly, perfectly well for him. So, yeah, great, uh, great bit of tactical uh, driving there. Yeah, it's interesting to know that obviously at the front, Sven Demol has obviously been into the pit lane. He pitted quite early. And at the moment, he's sitting second in the pros and second overall. Gordon Haig did go in, and he's also come out by seven seconds. So Gordon Haig has pitted. He's gone in, come out, and he's still out in front by seven and a half seconds. Jordan Haig, Malcolm chasing down Kevin Larson. Coming into the last seven minutes here, Greg, how many battles do you think we've got still left in us here as we're coming down to the final seven? I think there's, there's plenty of battles left in this one now. So obviously now we've all got all those pit lanes out the window, the strategy and the mentality changes again. It, it kind of becomes a mini sprint race, isn't it, really? So you've got uh, the, the, the remaining laps that we've got here. Um, so what is it, three or four laps to go? And uh, yeah, if you're going to make moves and you want to make progress then you need to start making those decisions now um, and finding those opportunities when they do arise and, uh, and pouncing on them. Yeah, I think you, you, you are right, you've got to take the most opportunities you can get. There's a slight little gap, you've got to go for it. It's that sign, isn't it, that uh, if you don't go for the gap, are you really a racing driver anymore? Well, there are times to go for the gap and there's times just to be sensible about it, I think. Would you, the thing is with these guys, you're going into the last six and a half. You've got Malcolm closing down on Larson. Devil's trying to get hold of Haig. He's not going to get there. Molly Klev and um, Alexander Scarrett are still fighting it out. Scarrett in that Porsche. Molly Klev in the Aston Martin. That Aston Martin was the one we saw earlier on. Greg used his fast repair clearly because his car's looking a little bit more shinier than it was when he probably went into the pits. Yeah, that's definitely looking a little bit more the way that it, it, it should. And I would imagine it's driving uh, and steering uh, a lot better than it was, was before as well. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, that's, that's the, the beauty of sim racing, I guess, when you can have a, a fast repair as an option to just magically make your car work and uh, get back out on track and get back into the action. Yeah, that's the thing. Fast repairs are handy. Of course, unless you run a race that doesn't have any, um, like I'm finding out. Don't run trucks, Greg. You don't have fast repairs. Well, you would know, wouldn't you? I would, actually, yes. Thank you very much. Yes, yeah. Mm. You would need to use the fast repairs if they did have them as well, quite a bit, wouldn't you? It's not my fault. <laughs> it never is. Hey, uh, um, that means I'm turning into a racing driver, right? Just deny all... Um, all What's the word I'm looking for? Responsibility, isn't it? And just blame everybody else and say it's their fault. That makes me a good yeah. sim racer. Do you want to? Uh, do you want to borrow my black book of excuses? I love the fact that you put what? book. You didn't even call it an encyclopedia. You've got that many. Uh, it's quite. It is quite big, I guess. But um, yeah, I've got, I've got a couple of volumes in there. Make them drive it. However, you want to borrow it. Oh yeah, it seems to be um, you're better off giving them to me. You know, you've got the excuses. I'm just the one you can benefit I, from. I've them. got, I've got the experience. Well, <laughs> I've this got is the experience the... using the excuses. That's why. Well, yeah, that's definitely a um, definitely a thing, isn't it? If you haven't known, Craig does use excuses quite often. Uh, to what happened? Why, what was the excuse for why you got lost? What? Which, uh, which time? <laughs> But the, 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 it's so bad that I've got to say that. The second time when we saw it live. The second time I went off the track and couldn't work out which direction the track went. So I went back on the track thinking I was going the right way until I saw a car coming the wrong way and one of my teammates shouted at me saying, Craig, you're going the wrong way. Yeah, but at least you did, it, in, at least but, you did that in a virtual world. I did that in real life. Yes. Not on a racetrack, though. No. But I suppose, it, regardless of if it's on a racetrack or not, it's still equally as scary. Uh, yes, um, it was equally scary with the wife screaming in my ear, 
get, I'm going the wrong way. Uh, Richard Jones and Stephen Mellis having a nice little tidy battle down here in 19th and 20th. Battle of the Ams. Williams is still leading the Ams with Mangus Joy and Vigard Olsen Leah in 13th, 14th, and 15th. But these guys fighting out for the remaining places in 19th and 20th. Torby and Mele is behind them. So three minutes on the clock. It looks like 202, possibly 101 more here, Craig. Uh, yeah, I think we definitely will get uh, another easy enough to win. Um, so, yeah, game one, it's a few battles going. Um, there's been quite a few battles going on. And we have got a, a spread out field now, uh, but there are little clusters of battles. So, uh, yeah, it could be a, a final bit of drama to this race, let's say. Where do you think the drama would come from? Uh, I, I, I couldn't possibly choose a particular battle, but I, I, I think there, there might be still a little bit of, uh, let's say, a little bit of argy-bargy here and there to come. Well, I'm going to go here with Carol Larson and Jordan Malcolm into the last 220. 220? Yep. 220 on the yep. clock. It looks like it will be the final lap for Gordon Hague. It looks like he's going to come through. My pick is the winner, winner, chicken dinner. <laughs> not bad considering I'm not, we'd not actually watched any of this, did we, really? We didn't know anything that went on. We didn't know any of the results. And um, it's, been a, it's been an interesting one here. And for me to pick the winner, it's a bit more made up. Um, how long are you going to go on about that for? Well, uh, when you stop talking about your trophies, I'll stop talking about the fact that I've just picked the winner. But you're the one that keeps bringing the trophies up, so it's, yeah, it's but never the, the, me. The, the, the thing is, if I don't, you would. That's the problem. We, we could have a we could have an argument about this live, or we can have an argument about it after the race. But yeah, you're, you're the one that keeps bringing it up, not me. I don't mind. It. As Gordon Hay comes around the final corner for the sim race in Norway, Polly account. Polly Polyaclemi <laughs> team, I think. Polly Polyalchemy. Polyalchemy comes over the line. You see Sven Devil coming down in the background. Kettle Larson with Jordan Malcolm still behind that. Tobias Holman doing a great job. Miles Owens in there. Then you got Anna's Lily Yorde. He's coming around the final corner here. He's just led us off with Moldekliev, Alexander Scarrett there, Ewan Bremer just about to go through with Kim Andre Bjorklund, who's got Tor Anders Bervin right up behind him in the BMW. Tor Anders there, part of the team Vikings machine team here this season. Quite a lot of different teams, and I'd be interested to see how that team standing plays out here because I think it could be open to an maybe just a little bit of a shock at times yeah i guess that's the nature of racing though isn't it you know it's uh really hard to call anything this let's say at this point uh, of the season with it just being sort of the open rounds and, and and people finding their feet but yeah it's uh gonna it's certainly gonna be an interesting season i, I like i said i haven't been watching this uh, and keeping up with it completely but uh, after watching this open round i think i definitely will be uh, sticking with it and following it you never know we might see him out on the racing circuit here if you like getting mr jones on to the track as we've come to the end of race two and it looks like gordon haig is gonna wrap this up here in race two for the bros He's on his way down at Van Bogan before we get into the veto. And I'm going to put down Haig on my paper with Demo behind. I think Larson is going to stay in front of Malcolm in the pros. In the ams at the moment, well, that's a little bit more closer. Coming on to the final lap, Magnus Droid gets the overtake done on Rob Williams on the final lap. How did he lose it on the final lap, Mr. Jones? Enough. That is um, to, to, to run a, a race like uh, as well as he has done and then to just uh, lose it on that final lap, that has uh, got to be a tough pill, uh, pillow, a tough pill to swallow. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, not ideal. Uh, not how you want it to end. It's not, but Gordon Haig is your winner. Sven Demel Larsen in the uh, pros. In the ands, it's Magnus Dyrod 
and Rob Williams, unless something really dramatic happens at the veto. I think Magnus is going to take this victory. And Williams in second place. Oh no, he's in the pit. Huh? Oh, that's, an, that's an odd decision. But then again, is it a decision he had to make in the hope of staying in? Well, he has finished, so technically he got third here because um, Olsen Lear. But then again, if that's a penalty for a drive through, would that not get put on to the end? Uh, yeah. I, um, I don't know on that one. That's, that's, that's odd. But then again, Jesus Amandari's in. So there we go. Uh, Madison Hafstad fighting down to the line. It is going to be um, Hafstad there. Melis doesn't end up taking it behind, unfortunately. Dan Lewis still out on the race circuit. And Melis is first, Dan's first out in the GT4. And then Ovid, Lin, uh, Ovid Anderson is in the final McLaren spot in 24th place as Anderson comes over the line there. So that's not been, to be fair to you, though, is it really when you think about it? It's not been a bad opening race. Yeah, it calmed down a little bit in the middle, but overall, it's been pretty good. And, and I think if that's going to set a precedent for the season, it could be a very interesting one. Yeah, I've got to fully uh, agree with that one yet again. So that's two times in one night, James. Um, I think it's been a, <coughs> a great start to the season. It's, uh, yeah, I know. I know it's um, difficult. It's it's. You never thought you'd hear that moment, particularly twice in, in one night. But yeah, really good racing, really good to see. Uh, and I think these guys are going to really offer up a quality uh, season of action ahead. Yeah, do we think, okay, here's a question, right? Knowing what we've got on there, do we think we're going to see a Norwegian take the victory? I think there's a strong possibility, yes. Oh, well, let's find out. But in race two, it is Gordon Haig is your winner. with Sven Demol, Kettle Larsen, and then Jordan Malcolm with Tobias Holman in fifth. Miles Owen sixth. Anders Liliode in seventh. Simon Modikliev in 8th and Alexander Scarrett in ninth, And then Iwan, Iwan Bremer in 10th. Kim Andre Bjortland in 11th with Tor Anders Berben in 12th. Magnus Dyrud takes the victory in the Ams in 13th. With Vigard Osalia in 14th. Alejandro Caridi in 15th. Stuart Pearson in 16th. Richard Jones in 17th. That would answer the penalty situation for Mr. Williams because he's not in that top three. Torbjörn Mele, Per Havard Hafstad, Rob Williams. So he did get a penalty that he did not get off. And then, unfortunately, he's ended up down in 20th. Stefan Menis, Dan Lewis, Ovin Nadis, Anderson, Jesus Amandari, and then Chris Evans, the last of the finishers there as well. Weird one for Williams. I'll have to try and find out what actually happened. But penalty at the end. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm guessing, um, is, is there an incident limit? Yes, What's the incident 17. 17. So I suppose it's a long old race to go. <laughs> and I know you can, particularly around this track, there's, there's lots of places you can get silly little off tracks and, and bits and pieces like that. So, uh, yeah, unfortunate because he led such a, a good race up until mm. that point uh, and to lose it on that last lap and, and then end up with a penalty. Um, yeah, very disappointing. Yeah, I think so. For him, he's going to be a bit upset. I don't doubt that one either. But that's going to bring this broadcast to an end. Thanks so much for joining us this afternoon for the GT3 replay from the GT4 replay, sorry, from the JPB GT4 Championship Round 1 live from the Nürburgring pre strucker circuit as well. I've been James Parfit. I've been alongside Craig Jones here for this one in the afternoon. As always, guys, take care. Have a great week. And you never know, we might see you on the track sometime. Good afternoon.